Great, I know that everyone is tired and you really crave a tea or coffee or something else. Um, so I want to try to give you a little bit of a glimpse into the future and I want to pick up what was discussed this morning. I think this table mentioned around the challenges and future. I don't want to have like wrong hopes created, but I can't be but being hopeful. And I think that is something which is really resonating with some feedback we got a month ago doing a workshop with uh, people who were diagnosed with Parkinson and we presented our technology and they said, well, it's not going to help me, but maybe my children or the generations to come. And I would like to just keep that in mind while I drive you through this last few uh, slides today. Um, before I give you the details what I'm actually doing, and it's around digital technology, I just wanted to give you a bit of a background where I'm actually coming from. And yes, I always like to start with my home because that's in the Alps, in the Dolomites. It's beautiful there, and the food and the taste and everything is amazing. So you can imagine how much I appreciate to have been grown up actually on a goat's farm. My parents still don't know how I ended up as a professor, but anyway, that's a different story. Um, from there, I moved to Austria where I studied. Again, uh, interesting to know is I studied as a communication scientist. So I studied human-human interaction. How do we communicate with each other? And I started then working for a company engaging with technology. And that's when I then started doing my PhD in computer science, trying to understand how can we actually think beyond just making screens, audio interfaces, but really thinking about all our human capabilities we are having, so also touch, taste, and smell. And that then drove me uh, to the UK with a Marie Curie Fellowship in Newcastle, where I then really did my first research around taste and smell and meta haptics. And then I built up my own research lab at Sussex, so from the north to the south, um, and now I joined last July under lockdown uh, UCL, the computer science department. Yeah, that's where I am right now. And I only really started working there in September where I met my students who started quite a few time ago. Um, and I'm representing three different, or I'm having three different hats today, um, which I think all kind of are useful. On one hand, I'm in a computer science department, so we are building things, we are building software, hardware, and we are trying a lot of different things. But I'm particularly uh, also looking at how do we interact with technology. Um, but I'm also representing um, the Deputy Director for Digital Health at the UCL Institute of Healthcare Engineering, where we're looking at new therapy uh, and new treatment approaches, and also effective and affordable devices and solutions, working closely with different hospitals and clinicians. And the third one is kind of also linked to what we heard from the previous speakers, trying to move what we do in our research laboratories into the real world. And so we were supported with uh, a European research grant where we could explore commercialization of the technology, a particular around smell technology. Um, and I will tell you a little bit more about O widgets, O or, the, or short OW. I think we had the same issues with no one knew how to pronounce the name. Uh, we are just researchers, but basically we are trying to digitalize um, smell technologies. And so all that fits into my research, which is around multisensory human-computer interaction, which in short just means how we interact with technology. Be it your TV, your mobile device, your car, you have to somehow press a button, say something to Alexa or hey Google. So all types of different interaction modalities. And I'm particularly looking at how can we really exploit more the tactile sensations our sense of smell and taste. And obviously I understand the chemical senses um, are not the topic here where you can really gain the experiences we are creating, but what we learned through our different research approaches that we start understanding how they are working, particularly how we stimulate them and how we can control them. 
and how that then in the end became actually quite relevant for the healthcare area. And um, yeah, so basically it's all around how do we build different devices and interfaces. And I just wanted to give you a few examples. Again, they are not specific uh, around smell loss or smell disorders or taste disorders yet, but we started with different collaborations like installations in a museum where we created a multi-sensory experience of dark matter. That was a project started by my PhD student who is blind himself, so he can't see any microscopes or any visualizations or animations, but we can feel, we can taste, smell, and hear dark matter. Metaphorical creations with the astrophysicists in Imperial College. But also another student of mine, Jada Brianza, she's working on how smell influences our body perception, how we feel about our body, because it influences our behavior, our emotions, and memories. And there is many more things to it. We just uh, kind of running a, a study in the University of Milan with the European Institute of Oncology where we're using smell as relaxation for cancer patients, pre-treatment and post, but also in a virtual environment how you can use these novel technologies in order to create attention, uh, particularly for neurophysiological rehabilitation. I'm not going into the detail of that, but just showing you the scope that we're doing a lot of different areas, and all we are doing there is we are building the technology, we are providing them to the experts, like we see here in the room, the expert in that field, to test hypotheses, to explore that field, enable them in doing it in a reliable, controllable way and digitally so that you can also keep track of how, for instance, your sense of smell is changing over time and when there might be a good moment to intervene. Um, and that brings me really to what I mentioned at the beginning with O-Widgets, where we built a software where you control smell design, but more importantly are the different devices, which really triggered an interesting development uh, together with um, Rockefeller University with the laboratory on neurogenetics and behavior, which are the experts uh, also working on smell disorders and smell loss. And we co-developed with them this smell test, a digital diagnostic toolkit for smell testing. So they are running now data collections using our technologies. And over the last, I think it's now three, four years, we jointly try to understand what they need and what we can provide. And so they can keep track of the different data and they particularly work with uh, groups, community groups like Alzheimer and Parkinson, where you can have early prediction of the onset of this neurogenetic disease, which is quite important because you might see these changes and if you keep track of your sense of smell, of your perception, then you have the ability to intervene. You can't stop it, but at least you have an opportunity to, to keep track of it. Um, and from there, sorry, from there we have now got a small uh, follow-up grant where we're exploring uh, the development of a smell training uh, application. So we have heard a debate before about smell training and smell testing. Um, and again, it's very important to keep in mind that there is no clear answer to its effectiveness. But again, I want to remind you about the potential future. So we are building devices which enable you to actually not just have a jar or uh, other kind of ways of manual delivery of smell and uh, train your nose, but we try to introduce a digital form of smell training um, where you can keep track of your records from yesterday, tomorrow, compare it with other friends, family members, and then you can see if you improve, not improve, and you can use it as an opportunity to reflect on it. And it's on the other hand also another tool for experts and clinicians to really kind of engage with and see how they can be used in their own research. So again, consider it as a technology platform which can enable further explorations. And I just want to show you uh, where we are right now. So we have a device prototype. Um, imagine this is like a small device with six channels, so you can put six different smells in, and you can use them with training. You have an app 
which is personalized to you, um, where you can then trigger it. It has kind of an automation and it has a record of what is happening. And that is exactly the kind of like first prototype we showed um, those participants uh, who were diagnosed with Parkinson to kind of gain also first feedback. And that was really useful for us to also learn how can we improve it? I mean, who in the room has a mobile phone? I would expect almost everyone. So it's kind of like on your mobile phone, you can just trigger the device. I mean, the only thing you need to do is you put it there, you, you start here and take your mobile phone, you start it, it recognizes you and then it delivers and then it has answers. Did you perceive the smell or not? Yes or no? And if you perceived it, we have a few questions device based on the research which we know out there. But it's a very early kind of stage. And um, I just want to conclude saying we hopefully going to start user testing um, in spring next year. And keep in mind, this is not to create clinical evidence that smell training is good or not. It's more about would you use it? Because our ultimate goal is bringing it home. It's the physiotherapy for your nose that maybe future generation can use. It becomes like your smartwatch, which keeps track of your exercises and other things, your weight, you're keeping track of, of your weight. So it's something which I think future generations should make part of their regular checks and training. And it's just something, yes, oh, did you check your nose already? Yes. And we can keep track of it. And if something changes, maybe your GB picks up on it, and then you have a discussion. And hopefully in the future, healthcare professionals know what they are talking about with that particular, in these particular topics. Sorry, that was a very fast uh, walkthrough. Um, but if you want to talk more, please do feel free, get in touch. If you want to just try it out, I mean, we have a very, like, prototyping set up in UCL, in London, next to Euston Road station. So feel free to just get in touch. Thank you.